Yeah, so I'm getting bullied by hard water. And as everyone knows, the best way to deal with the bully is to just get jacked and suck that mean water in the face. I think it's important to understand how these work because you'll be in deep shit like I was for like three days straight because I didn't do my homework beforehand, didn't understand what was going on. It just would have made it a lot easier. So real quick, I'm going to be as quick as possible. So hard water, what is it? Okay, we got water here. Now the, the water coming out of the tap, the city is going to be adding lots of gunga and things and minerals and whatever. Um, but the bottom line is you're going to have minerals. You're going to have chlorine. You're going to have magnesium. You're going to have calcium. And what all these do, I mean, they're not really all that great for your skin. They cause your soap not to sud and also degrade all of your pipes. So if you've ever seen copper pipes and they've got a bunch of green, bluish, tinted gungalunk of fun on it, that's, that's hard water. That's hard water corroding your pipes. So now that we under, kind of understand what hard water is, um, a water softener, well, it's a magical device. You know, hard water comes in and soft water comes out. You can't explain that, okay. So today we'll be installing a Fleck 9100, which has actually two tanks so you don't have to really bother with a regeneration cycle interrupting your water supply. Before even assembling, figure out exactly where you're going to put it. And here I am mocking up exactly where I'm going to be plumbing the pipes. What you have to determine is where your water supply line is coming in. And I personally was about this close to installing it in the wrong place because I mistakenly thought that's where the water was coming in from. <laughs> so lucky. It can be tricky if you have a finished basement to figure out where that is. So just spend the time and figure it out. So first we're going to be attaching these filter looking things to the controller and also greasing the o-rings with some silicon based lubricant. I was using Vaseline and that's a mistake. Petroleum actually can damage and expand these o-rings so that's an oopsie on my part. The controller just kind of s screws into the top of a tank and then this in and out pipe for the second tank you attach it with these clamps. There's really no need to over tighten. They say not to exceed 20 foot pounds and that's basically just tighten it until it's tight and then don't worry about it. The pain in the ass comes in when you have to place surgeon through that hole. So I used a pair of pliers and then do the same thing to the second tank. Except the second tank of course is not going to have a controller sitting on top of it. While I hump these two together, it's important to note that you should be putting your water softener next to an outlet, a water drain, and your mains water supply line. You will need all three of those ingredients for this to work. So now I'm attaching the bypass valve here, and again, it's just a being attached with o-rings and some clamps but then to attach it to your main water supply line here's some three quarter inch npt fittings and you do maybe four or five windings of teflon tape give it an extra unga dunga with a pair of channel locks and it should be tight enough to not spring any leak what i screwed in at the top is the water drain well, this hose right here is the brine line and you have the nut, the sleeve, and then the filter insert that you have to put in here. And again, just hand tighten it and then just maybe an extra quarter turn. Next comes a real fun part. We're going to shut off the water supply to the whole house and we have to make absolutely certain that this valve still works. So start draining the water by going to the lowest point at your house, like the lowest location sink, and let that water drain for a good 5-10 minutes until it's all gone. For safety, I turned off my boiler, and now I'm also checking the upstairs and opening it up so the air pressure pushes out any extra water. I'm gonna pause right here, very important. Once you start sawing a pipe, there is no going back. So you better be damn certain that you have enough time in the day to finish the job. And if you can't, have sufficient time to call an emergency plumber to fix your mess. So schedule accordingly, make sure the water has truly drained out of the pipes and that there's nothing left and that the valve actually works and have at it. I'm cutting my main water line here, a combination of my Dremel and a hacksaw. Honestly, there's no shame in using shark bite fittings with copper, but you know, I prefer soldering. I personally think it probably lasts longer. 
So I have my water supply line cut and now I'm trying to rotate the T on where the softened water will be coming into for the rest of the house. But I'm having trouble getting the solder soft enough to rotate the pipe so I'm using all kinds of tricks here trying to suck out the water with a hose, trying to suck out the water with a vacuum, a wet vac that is. Because the simple fact is if there's even so much as a droplet of water still in there that didn't drain it's gonna wick the heat right out of your torch so I just wound up saying screw it and I cut the pipe and drained the rest of the water and then fixed it later. <laughs> just like that. This might not necessarily be of any interest to you because you might not have copper, maybe you have PEX, maybe you have CPVC, but I'm going to show you a little bit about how to solder copper pipes. So here's a bit of a time lapse. I'm just fitting it up and cutting it, but the, the procedure is basically as follows. You make a clean cut, use a pipe cutter, then you deburr it, so make the edges really smooth. Then you sand the copper. Then you put acid on it, you put etchant on it, and you do the same to the pipe that you're joining it to, whether it's a just a fitting or something else, and then heat it up sufficiently for solder to flow, and that's how you make the joint. You are basically soldering pipes together. Here I'm just putting a, a valve, which is very helpful and probably code even. So once again, a little bit up close, I use a nice low profile pipe cutter to make nice clean cuts on the copper. I use a, <clears throat> a pipe reamer to get rid of any hard edges. I sand the pipe for the flux, the etchant, to have a place to go into. And so here I'm applying the etchant with a brush on both mating surfaces. I attach them together nice and snug. And then once they're nice and snug, that's when I heat the pipe. It usually takes about 20 to 30 seconds to get it hot enough. And then I use pipe solder to join the pipes together. It's really cool stuff. I really enjoy doing it. I mean, look at this. Look at how it just flows and makes joints. And after you're done, you have to remember to take a wet rag once it's all cooled off and wipe the acid off the pipes because it will continue to corrode them if you don't remove it. But now you can kind of see the method to my madness. I have my inlet and my outlet for the house. And I'm using the supplied three quarter inch flexible tubings that was supplied with the softener, or well, I bought it extra to make my life a little bit easier. And they're just push fittings and that's really nice. Time to test. Good luck everybody. Got it in bypass. Let's see what happens. Here I'm turning on the valve that I had installed just for the water softener, and I still have the softener in bypass mode. Huh. No leaks? Ah. Shit. Just had to jinx myself, so I had to redo that joint. So now it's time to finish the install. Here I'm just installing this overflow spigot or whatever you want to call it. That's where excess water will come out in case something goes wrong with this float. And I'm also installing the brine line. Here I'm installing three quarter inch drain tubing. This needs to go into a sink or a drain pipe. I thought I was gonna be smart and I actually plumbed it to this water pump I had sitting next to me at my boiler. This is, takes care of the excess water for the humidifier. But as I learned very quickly, it cannot pump nearly fast enough for that drain. That drain is basically nearly city pressure. But more on that later. Next, you're gonna wanna test your water supply uh, for hardness because you're gonna have to program the hardness into your controller. So my hardness is between 100 and 250 parts per million, which I had to then convert to grains per gallon or something like that. Just look it up online. You'll be able to find a conversion. So to program this meter, you're going to have to set the time to 1201 and then hold the up and down arrow for five seconds. Most of these settings should be already programmed from factory or should I say from your supplier. So every time you want to advance the menu, just press the regeneration button. But now here, the H, that's for hardness and that's where you convert it. And for my case, 100 to 250 converted to about eight and that you can always change a bit later. Safety factor, I don't know anything about, but I read that you should set it to 10%. DO stands for day override. 
I think this will aut automatically regenerate after 14 days. But if you have high iron, I read that it is recommended to set it to about 7. Regeneration time, that's when this tank will regenerate itself and 2am is a good time, that's low water usage. The rest we're just gonna blaze through, it's all set nicely from the dealer. Don't have to change any of this really. FM stands for flow meter type and again, shouldn't need, have to need to change that. And once it's programmed, next it's time to s regenerate, to do a manual regeneration cycle on your tank. So set the time, we're going to be adding some salt to the tank, so you can again buy that at any hardware store. The finer the grains the better, and it is indeed salt but probably not exactly edible. One bag is enough and then add two to four gallons in here of fresh water. And then it's time to get it out of bypass mode. And now you also check for leaks. You'll hear lots of gurgling as the tanks are filling up. Yeah, like I said, two to four gallons is enough to get this thing going, get the siphoning effect going. And now it's time for a manual regeneration cycle. Just hold that regeneration button for about five, maybe 10 seconds. It's gonna start counting down. You'll see it, so. Right now it's in the backwash cycle, you start hearing it spin its little levers and gears as it's trying to set itself to a new setting. And that gets it going. It's gonna start draining water, filling water. And yeah, that's where I discovered oopsie daisy, that pump is not nearly enough. Oops. So I had to redo some of my work and I plumbed a drain line about 30 feet away into a sink, which was a lot of fun. This is mostly just three quarter inch tubing I got from the hardware store. And so now that I've got my lesson learned, yeah, it's just a bunch of basically pipe holders and I used a barb uh, to join two pipes together because I didn't have enough. And it gets routed all the way into the sink very high-tech stuff. So here is my second attempt at doing a manual regeneration. Here it is draining very nicely. And if you have the Fleck 9100 like I do, you're gonna have to do it twice. So the first time is gonna do tank number one, and then the second time it's automatically gonna switch to the second tank and regenerate the second tank. And so that's about it for the install. I chose to do the overflow pipe I routed it to the pump. After all, I think it should be able to handle any kind of overflow at the very least. So it'll take one to two weeks for your water to get fully softened, depending on the capacity of your system and how much water there is. Once it's all done, don't forget to purge all the air out of your system by turning on the faucet that's at the lowest level in your house. And as for me, I decided I didn't want to run this thing off an extension cord, so I installed a GFCI outlet. So I gotta say, this was this was pretty tough. It was a tough one for me. I'm glad I got it done. My fiance has been asking for one for like five years now, so <laughs> here we finally are. And the water quality improvement has been staggering. Even my skin isn't dry anymore, so absolutely worth it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs>